Greetings, grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And welcome to Evolve Online Worship here at Bradley. I'm Pastor Dave, and I'm coming to you from my home office. In Hi, my name is Pastor Heather, and I'm coming to you from Shelbyville in my home office. And I am Kathy Book, coming to you from downtown Indianapolis. We are also assisted in worship today by accompanist Devin Shaw. And as you can see, Zach Evans is once again already hard at work in the corner of your screen doing our deaf interpretation. We want to remind you that we continue to offer our, our in-person worship service at 9.30 a.m. in our sanctuary. And we'll do this as long as it is safe to do so. And also the service recordings and our midweek de devotionals are always available on our website at bradleyumc.org by clicking the worship or connect online buttons. You know, our, our world can seem like a battlefield at times. The author of Ephesians reminds us that our battle is not against enemies of the flesh, but against the powers of this present darkness. And then the author charges us to put on the whole armor of God. Today, we will explore how dressed in the armor of God and Jesus Christ, we can be agents of his resurrection. Once again, we're glad you joined us today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Welcome to worship. Please allow me to call us to worship. This is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 4, and verses 12 through 16. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generations the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. In the sight of their ancestors, he worked marvels in the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zon. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the waters stand like a heap. In the daylight, he led them with a cloud and all night long with a fiery light. He split rocks open in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Let us pray. Faithful God, through rain and thunder, you are with your people. Even when we turn our backs on you, your patience and tolerance abound. And you give us a new start, time and time again. Thank you for pouring your grace over us through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In our scripture lesson today, the Exodus story picks up precisely where the psalmist concludes the remembrance of the mighty deeds of God in our call to worship today. This is Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, choose some men for us to go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other. So his hands were steady in the, until the sun set. And Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the sword. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, write this as a reminder in a book and recite it in the hearing of Joshua. I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, the Lord is my banner. And he said, a hand upon the banner of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Let us pray. Lord, speak to us your word, that hearing it, our hearts may be transformed, our lips may prophesy, and our feet follow your path. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, we return to Exodus today, and, and Exodus is, is really um, the story of, of remembering. And it was a, a, a narrative story uh, way before it was written down. Uh, it was the stories of the people of God uh, to remember as a memorial to God's mighty acts on behalf uh, of, of Israel. It, it gave future assurance based on God's past goodness uh, to the people. And there were some key themes. The first theme was, was liberation. And we see that in the story of the Passover. Uh, in the Passover, the Egyptian firstborn were, were all struck down, but the houses of the Israelites were, were passed over. A, a second key theme in Exodus is the, the theme of protection. We see this in the parting of the sea. The people were cornered between the sea and the advancing Egyptian armies. But all at once, the waters were parted, and Israel passed through. And then as the armies entered the water, the waters closed, destroying them. And then finally, there was the theme of, of provision. There was manna. There was quail. There was water from a rock in the wilderness. There was hunger that was satisfied. There was thirst that was quenched. And now today... The people are under attack. A battle is ensuing. And the military overtones reminded me of, of some of the folks that I used to work with. Uh, back at Hills Pet Nutrition, we used to use a recruiting firm that specialized in placing uh, um, military officers who were transitioning into civilian jobs. And, and many of these um, guys uh, were, were, were West Point grads, so some of them maybe from the Naval Academy, uh, but several of them served as, as Army Rangers. And, and, and man, I tell you, they lived a different kind of life. And, and sometimes they had some trouble uh, transitioning. I remember uh, uh, Carl, who uh, was promoted uh, to my engineering team, and, uh, and, and we were having some coaching conversations about uh, uh, his new role. And at one point in time, he kind of paused in the conversation and he, and he looked at me and he said, Dave, he says, I don't know. I'm just not used to building things. I'm more used to blowing things up. It was a lot different for him. And as I think about it, the Israelites were like God's ancient recon rangers, forging into the wilderness in search of the promised land. Carl would tell me that, that uh, the, the theme of the, the, the rangers was, I'm going to be a recon ranger. I'm going to live a life of danger. And, and isn't that what the people of God did as they, as they made their way through the exodus and made their way to the promised land? First it's Pharaoh, and then it's hunger, and then it's thirst, and, and now it's this guy named Amalek and his army. And, and things are not so different today. You know, we are hungry. We are thirsty. And in many cases, we are under attack. We're doing the Lord's reconnaissance work in our broken world today as well. Now, here's some key observations from the text. First, Amalek's attack is unprovoked. The attack seems to come out of nowhere. I mean, we've heard nothing of Amalek since Genesis 36, 
when, when, when his clan was established. And the other thing that we, we observe here is that the staff of God is invoked once again. Moses raises the staff to invoke six of the nine plagues. The staff was raised to part and return the Red Sea over the Egyptian armies. The staff struck the rock and the water poured out. And today the staff is raised up. And when the staff is raised, Israel prevails. But the other observation is, is that Moses still needs some help. Aaron and her help Moses keep the staff raised so that Joshua may defeat Amalek. God promises eventual victory. But here we see that God also indicates there will be ongoing conflict for the people of God and for us as well. You see, life's attacks on us sometimes seem unprovoked. We didn't ask for our human condition. We inherited it. We never know when the brokenness of the world might jump out at us. Things like Pearl Harbor, the 9-11 attacks, the, the natural disasters and pandemics like COVID-19, something seem to come at us from nowhere. Personal losses like divorce, disease, and even death many times seem to come unprovoked. Social justice issues like human sexuality and racial inequity lurk insidiously in our background until stimulated to the forefront like they are today. We struggle to understand, but the only thing clear is that we are living that life of danger as we forge forward in the wilderness of our world. But the good news is, is that the cross is our staff raised in the present wilderness. The staff in the Old Testament is a symbol of conquest. At times it's used as an offensive weapon, as in the examples of the plagues. Sometimes it's a defensive weapon, like in today's example, or, or the example of the parting of the Red Sea. Other times it's a weapon of comfort. Psalm 23 says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The cross is the symbol of our conquest today. It can be an offensive weapon when we raise it to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and free the oppressed. It can be a defensive weapon when we raise it in reconciliation against the brokenness of sin in our lives. It can also be a weapon of comfort when we raise it to assist those who are suffering from disaster and disease. But the one thing about the cross is it's always raised in community like Moses, we also need help. You see, no one can raise the cross without Jesus. Just like Moses needed Aaron and her to help him raise the staff, so do we need Christ. And where do we find Christ today? We find Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and the community of the body of Christ. We need the direction and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the support of the body of Christ as well as we go forward. And the cross is raised only according to God's terms. It's not raised according to our own purposes and timing. The closing passages today promise victory, but continued struggle as well, as I said. Joshua defeated Amalek that day because Moses raised the staff according to God's will and plan. But there was a battle with that same enemy in Numbers 14 that ends very, very differently because it was not fought according to God's terms. Raising the cross only guarantees victory when it's raised according to God's terms, the terms of the good news, the terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what a sweet victory it can be when we as God's resurrection recon rangers lift high the cross of Christ according to the terms of the gospel in the wilderness of danger of our world as a community formed and driven by the terms of the gospel, the needs of the marginalized are met, our iniquities are overcome, and we are comforted, 
by God's peace and joy as the kingdom of God continues to heal our world and our souls. This is the good news, the word of the Lord. Amen. And now let us respond to the proclamation of the word as we participate together in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we lift to God the cares and concerns of our hearts for our congregation, community, and world, let us respond to God with thanksgiving as we give thanks to God with our prayers. O oh God, who is ever present, you hear our cries and are ever faithful in your mercy. We come to you with our concerns for ourselves, our community, and the world for our church and its leaders. Fill them with the spirit and mind of Christ so that they would serve you and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our country and global community, enable our leaders to make decisions for the sake of people and not profit to serve others and not themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our local community, guide our government, school, and health officials as they navigate how to keep the people of Greenfield safe from COVID. And thank you for the 18 people who gave blood this past Monday. Continue to give our community the heart to give and serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer with sickness, sadness, bereavement, anxiety, or abuse, Envelop them in your love and help us to be their community. We especially pray for David and Kathy Medved as they grieve the loss of their brother-in-law, Corey Greger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the other intentions we hold in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we know that you walk with us and you answer when we call. With gratitude and trust, we pray in Jesus' name who loves us and who taught us to pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we close, I would ask you to note that the post or email that brought you to the link of this online worship experience contains a link to our online giving portal. As you feel led, please use that link to give thanks to God with your gifts, tithes, and offerings. Or send your offering to the church directly at 210 West Main Street, Greenfield, Indiana, 46140. Thank you once again for your generosity. And now, may the God of peace give you peace at all times and in every way. Go now in peace, love and serve your Lord. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be blessed, be safe, be encouraged, and by all means, be God's. We'll see you next week.